about it. Discuss it. It's the Sunday papers. Holy fuck. I mean, that's what it used to be in the old days. You got up in the morning, you read the Sunday paper, <laughs> and then yeah. you talked about it all day. You talked about what was going on in the world. And what do kids do today? TikTok and masturbate. <laughs> I think, wait, I think you brought yourself into this oh, once again. Oh, shit. Sorry. Um, how are you, man? It's not me. It's you. How are you doing? I know it's a big day for you. So uh, a little frazzled. So we'll just be uh, totally transparent up top. So I have a heart out at, uh, at noon. That's 49 minutes from now, sadly. Uh, we would have been earlier, but... Uh, how about this? You guys all are know-it-alls with corrections. Someone write in, my audio on my brand new MacBook Pro is, I plug headphones in, will not recognize them. I restarted. I went to preferences, sound. I checked. It says it's the, you know, my, and then I gave up on them and it's delayed the whole podcast today. Uh, oh, I keep looking up there. I should look down here. Um, and I'm doing it on my phone. Because I can, I also can't now control my audio on my laptop, regardless of headphones. I'll talk for 50 more minutes about this. Anyway, couldn't turn the volume down, can't mute it. So there's a lot of audio issues with feedback when you're trying to do a Zoom and you're blah, 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 blah. And uh, Mike, you're reason, avoiding. You're avoiding. The reason I have a hard out is because uh, we, my stepmother died uh, two weeks ago. You know my stepmother, Cynthia. Of course, and, and I'm very sorry. Yeah, 41 years married uh, to my dad, and so there's a memorial service today. Uh, East Coast, pretty big, uh, and then the family voted that um, I MC it, so... Anyway, so there's not only like MC it, but you basically you had to figure out all the technological stuff too, which we right. just Got, established you're not good at. Right. Got a, a very famous Boston comedian that you know, Jimmy Tingle. I asked the I asked someone out here, I have to do this. I go, Have you been to any big zooms or memorials that like impressed you, like or anything? I just randomly. And like it's so funny you ask. And anyway, the short version is her husband's dad died. He saw a memorial for a comic in Boston, 28 performers, and it ran flawlessly, this Zoom. So he hired him for his dad's memorial, and they knocked it out of the park. So uh, Jimmy Tingle's company, which started just to do comedy shows over Zoom, is now helping people do these types of things. That's amazing. So how many people yeah. are on the on the call? It's about like... You know, between 275 and 300, Damn. it's, it's, it right. is not a small affair. Yeah. And we're coordinating a bunch, you know, like of live people. We have four videos playing back at different times. It's very much like producing a show. Like I had a rundown with the item numbers and the whole thing. How, so is, anyway, uh, how is your dad yeah. doing? He's doing okay. You know, you know, that's the whole thing is like, um, you know, weddings and funerals are very much giant distractions from what's really going on. You know, right. we talked about that before. Yeah. So this isn't exactly hosting a party like a wedding or even a funeral, but there are a lot of logistics. And my dad is bad at like group emails to people and then dealing, did you get the link and all that stuff? Yeah. Um, anyway, one quick note, you know my stepbrother Jeff very well. So- Jeff Nichols, comedian extraordinaire. Is he is he retired or is he still doing it? Uh, I I think he's kind of retired. He lives yeah. in Montauk. He's 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 generally known as the best striped bass fisherman. He's a captain out in Montauk. Uh, not great, not great with boats. Uh, <laughs> if you, don't, if you haven't boats. listened to the show, he sank Mike's dad's boat. Mike's oh he Mike's he's, dad's he's, stepson sank his boat and burned his house down. He also yeah. Not at the same time, but that would have been a tear, man. He's amazing. You have amazing stand-up stories about him, and he would, like, sometimes do. He would, like, have a gig werever in South Carolina, and when he got down there, oh, he'd panic, and he would start doing a tells material, <laughs> and he comes back once, and he goes to a tell. He's like, uh, your stuff really didn't play in South Carolina, and a tell just goes, oh, sorry, man. <laughs> And the best is, this is Jeff's defense, which actually was pretty good. He's like, these 
poor people have paid good money and they're seeing my shit act. He's like, Yo, wouldn't wh- I give them then the great Dave Mate- Dave Attell's material? Hey. He's like, isn't that a gift? And it's like, that is true. If you're like a shitty band, like at least play a cover. That's right. If you're a local playhouse, you don't you don't come up with some fucking local script. You bring in Lay Miz. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So. I look at this. I've been zooming. Uh, this is I, I think thankfully this is something I've never said before. I've been zooming with 80-year-old women all week because we've pre-recorded their comments for this. There's going to be about Smart. Thir- 13 speakers. Right. Wow. So, I even wrote up a card that said press the mute button like a like a cue card <laughs> cuz I would have to hold that up to them, right? Thank God they're not going live some of them. <laughs> But it is deadly boring. Like, I first met Cynthia when we were in Palm Beach, yeah, blah, blah, yeah. blah. So I go to Jeff. I'm like, Cynthia, of all people, Cynthia would, like, so they love the movie Step Brothers, to their credit, my dad and Cynthia, and always thought of Jeff and I. And they would, Cynthia would make us repeat stories that we were sick of telling, but she just loved laughing. At cr- I mean, her son is Jeff Nichols. So anyway, I go, Jeff. This is, we got to shake this up a little. I go, can I call you back? Which also will give it more of a less produced feel and looser. Do you have any stories? He's like, oh, I have, he goes, I have one from like the, the last few weeks of her being alive. I'm like, oh, what's that? And he goes, <laughs> he goes, um, she, one morning when I got there, whatever, and she woke up, she's like, read me what the night nurse logged, logged in. So the night nurse she was on hospice essentially and they would have a night nurse come in for the for the last two weeks and she they would have a log and the log was very important like about uh, this is what information this is what um, medication the last hour I gave her this so wait till 11 before any more the morphine or whatever and just generally how the night was and all that and Cynthia kind of had a rough night so she wanted to know and she also was dying for more painkillers she's like read me exactly what the night nurse logged in and just like I don't think we have to do that mom she's like D-, and she got very kind of bothered so Jeff picked up the log and read the first line and goes, Mom, we don't have to do this. She's like, Jeff, read it to me or hand it to me. And Jeff goes, okay. And Jeff reads the first line. It won't be long now. <laughs> uh, <laughs> if someone out there doesn't... St- <laughs> If someone out there doesn't steal that for a movie scene, or if, why aren't I? Oh There's my the, you god! Give me, you give me a million years to write that. I'm not coming up with it. <laughs> and Cynthia, to her credit, started dying laughing. So I tell this to Jeff and Jenny, and they're both. I mean, Jenny, his sister, my stepsister, and Laura. Basically, it's four kids. We're stepbrothers and stuff. But and the girls are like. No way! Like that's too dark. And I'm like, you're, you're crazy. Yeah, yeah. I go, especially. I guess you have to add that Cynthia died laughing, and then that was their joke for like two weeks. Yeah. yeah. Hey, mom, won't be long now. Yeah. Like it was already done a <laughs> yeah, running yeah. joke. Yeah. Oh, that's I think that's great. one of the best stories that's ever. Fantastic. That's great. Yeah. <laughs> and people are expecting something like that from Jeff. Yeah. Yeah. And and I go, listen, Jeff. And then that's how I couch that. I go oh, here. I go to remove all like that. You're the bad guy. Tell sorry. I will make you tell it. In other words, put you can put it. I'll take the brunt. Right. I go, but it it lessens it even. No one's really going to blame me. And yeah. I've heard the story from you. But so we both do better if I kind of force you to tell the story. So anyway, yeah. great. That's happening today. And then you got uh you got some stories of your own as the MC. Yeah, I have a couple of stories. Uh, well, one is. Uh, their wedding night was 1979 and I met Jeff, my stepbrother at the wedding. So uh, apparently there were no books on good parenting back then, (laughs) but that is not how you blend families. Uh, So anyway, I met Jeff and they got rooms at the Plaza hotel uh, for their wedding night. It's separate. And you know, the kids were in one room and then they were in whatever room. So Jeff takes me down to the basement of uh, the Plaza Hotel to the very, very world-famous restaurant, Trader Vic's. So we go into Trader Vic's, and he orders drinks, and we have drink, and we get very buzzed, 
and then we wrestle in the hallway and get in trouble at the Plaza Hotel. Now, here's the context. This was May 1979. Four weeks earlier, I turned 12. And Jeff was 13, and he was turning 14 the next month. So another way of wording that is, four weeks earlier, I was 11. And we go into Trader Vicks, Trader Vicks, which is known for their Mai Tais and all their like Polynesian drinks. Warren Zevon, I got a pina colada at Trader Vicks. Yeah, exactly. We didn't even order the fruity drinks. Jeff ordered two gin and tonics. <laughs> <laughs> and Trader Vicks was the most famous restaurant easily in the country. They would serve clearly anybody. Wow, that's hilarious. The drinking age at that time, the drinking age at that time in New York was 18. But yeah. So you were drunkenly fucking, wrestling at 12 years old. And the parents no I mean up in their hotel up in their honeymoon suite, no idea, yeah, no idea. So funny. That's yeah. great. Yeah. Well, so. uh no, my 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 best memory of her is the the uh St. Patrick's Day parade where your dad was the grand marshal which was one of the biggest honors somebody from New York City can have. And, it was great. And so uh, they had a friends and family of the Grand Marshal banner, and then everybody, you and I flew in to march with them, and then your sister flew in and George yeah. and everybody. And so we're all behind the banner walking. Cynthia is in front of the banner walking. Oh. And she's she's waving to people like she's the Grand Marshal, shaking hands, leading the yeah. charge. And, oh, uh, but she was she was so proud of your dad. That that's what was yeah. nice about it. And keep in mind how much she hated Irish people most of her life. That's the crazy. She know, was a just, wasp, she's right? Hardcore St. Louis of all things, like oh, Chris. Oh yeah. Yeah yeah yeah. Who's trying to bring down Wall Street currently? Uh, and thank God he's gotten over to new chat rooms. And uh, so she's old money from uh, St. Louis and uh, looked down their nose very much at the Irish. Yeah, right. As they should. Yeah, right. Exactly. In uh, fact, they try to get into this elitist club that they should be ashamed of, which is exactly, as you know, across the street from Mar-a-Lago. Yeah. It's, it's, it's on a rotary and they're on the other side of the rotary and boy, do they look down their nose, even though most of those, you know, whatever, we're not going to get, even though most of them voted for Trump, they hated the traffic he caused. Yeah. But anyway, one of the reasons they couldn't get in that club for a while was because my dad was Irish and like Cynthia was like, please come on. Like, it's like kind of, we're going to diversify a little, like, please let this <laughs> like imagine what everyone else, what everyone else is up against with this incredibly racist club. Right. Anyway, right. Uh, well, I won't, I won't tell that story at the service. Well, she was, Cynthia was your dad's ticket to uh, the upper ech social echelons. Yeah. She was from that world and, your dad is, you know, growing up shoveling coal into a furnace in the Bronx. It yeah. was like, you know, it was, you know, rarefied air for him to be in places like that. Uh, yeah. And, then, you know, the dirty little secret is uh, those old school money wasps uh, will rival any Irish family in terms of alcoholics. Oh, yeah. Like, oh, yeah. Like actually clobber them. Yeah. Most likely. Right. Right. All right, what are we doing? Let's do it. Let's talk about it. Well, first of all, shout out to Mark Molson. This week's song, very fun, very well produced. And the logo comes from... That logo is pretty great. Uh, I'm going to have to... And I love the song. I don't know what the fuck happened to the name on the logo. I'll I'll find it. I'll announce it next week. My yeah. apologies. They need... Uh, yeah, we'll read it next week. They need credit because time was spent on this one. Yeah. What is it exactly? Isn't it the the takeoff of um, the show everybody's watching? Uh, the the you know Marvel. Here it comes. Oh, WandaVision. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, WandaVision. Which yeah. has that retro look, you know, very um, you know Dick Van Dyke show type look at times. Have you seen that? No. They put them in the black and white. It looks like a '50s TV show for much of it. I haven't watched it at all, and I'm not really that interested. But. Uh, it's it's a very interesting approach. I, I was like done it. by Eric Eric Chirilanzio. The graphic did the graphics. Uh, a couple quick yeah. corrections. I look, he made me look like Caitlyn Jenner. So thank you. Mouse Rat pointed out that I pronounced Median wrong. I forget how he said. Maybe I said Medellin. Probably. <laughs> 
Rob Mitchell said, uh, your Bitcoin uh, correction now needs more info. Most big companies that accept Bitcoin as payment use a payment processor that converts to the native fiat currency so they don't actually care about Bitcoin price volatility. All right, so they so they, they buy it and then they convert it. Uh, uh, whatever. Everything's over. Everything's changed since this last week on Wall Street. Jay Will says, Fitz Dog, the name of Rob Duke's band is Generation Kill. He also was in Exodus, the San Francisco thrash band, for several years before he was before he left the band. Good uh, correction. We want to get that right, actually. I love thrash band, even just that phrase. And finally, Paul said, I love all the podcasts. You mentioned that Phil Spector worked on Let It Be. I took a history of rock and jazz class at college, and the professor told us the Beatles had recordings that were essential de essentially demos, still owed their label an album, but could no longer work together. The record label took the demo recordings and hired Spectre to make an album out of them. This is why there are so many added instruments. Spectre used his wall of sound technique to make the recording sound more complete. Can you imagine that was their leftover stuff, kind of? I, I know. Insane. Unbelievable. Yeah. And I think Yesterday was on that album, right? Uh, but I think there were some songs that the Beatles then went back and stripped some of that out of. I know it was at that point, and oh my God, we're going to get to the Beatles. The Beatles nerd army is going to, you know. But I, I know that um, they were. It was very individualized, for lack of a better word, at that point. They were like, you know, Harrison was like hanging out a lot with Clapton, and even I think brought Clapton into one of the sessions. But was like, and then Harrison wrote, um, "Here comes the sun," about leaving the Beatles. Oh you know no, that? shit, really? Yes. No, no, they were, they were like, he and Paul, I think especially, were basically not speaking. Yeah. It was, it was very toxic, especially according to Harrison. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, the, don't worry about corrections. We kind of got it right. It's, 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 don't, please don't correct us on all that stuff. I like, I'm, for your time, I'm just saying. Um, no, yesterday was not on that. But on that album, Across the Universe, which some people think is their greatest song, um, I Me Mine... I got a feeling long and winding road. Other people think is their greatest song. Get yeah. get back. Let it be. Holy shit. Um, tour dates coming up. Not till March. I canceled uh, February and March. Uh, March 25th through 27th, however, I'll be in Raleigh, North Carolina. April 29th through May 1st, I'll be in San Francisco. Also just announced a date in uh, Sacramento and Philly. Go to fitzdog.com. Hey, Mike, do you have a hard time taking pills? I know you do. You know what? You're not Someone's alone. Some swallowing them. Some swallowing them, especially, you know, also I've had a little bit of a sore throat and also, yeah, sometimes. Yeah. Sometimes you uh, have a hard time swallowing and you have a hard time getting an erection. That's why Blue Chew is here. They have the active, sometimes. active ingredients, sildenafil and tadalafil, which are the same active ingredients as Viagra. And Cialis. You can go get a free consultation with a doctor. He'll figure out what you need exactly. You won't have that awkward conversation. You, you don't want the guy that puts his finger in his ass also talking to you about boners. Now, these <laughs> people, they only talk about boners. They love it. Yeah. So uh, don't uh, wait in I line. I like the name. I like the name. Tadon like I don't know how it's pronounced properly, Tadonafil, but, you know, they have to think long and hard on these, like, I know Ambi and all, like a lot of them are like snores more, snooze. They like they they weave in connotations with sleeping in the name somehow. But I like Tada. It's kind of like Tada. <laughs> <laughs> like yeah. What right. else? Forty minutes later, Tada. Yeah, Blue Chew. We put the Tada <laughs> in Tadalafil. Yeah. Uh, ships directly to your door in discreet packaging. Chew it and do it. Here's the great deal. Visit BlueChew.com. Get your first order free. How about that? When you use promo code PAPERS, just pay $5 in shipping. That's B-L-U-E, Chew.com, promo code PAPERS. Front page. There it is. Let's talk about what? GameStop, Mike. Yeah, wait, can I read? Uh, I, I did pull up one letter you sent me from someone. So here is the letter. Uh, 
8 said, Mike, any chance you were in on the short sell of GameStop? I think that's what you call it. Also, a memory I would like to erase, because that's what we talked about last week, yeah. and we asked listeners. A memory I would like to erase it was finding my dad's condoms, mainly because they were called Rough Riders. <laughs> Gross. Love you. <laughs> love the show. Thank you for the laughs. Signed, Liz. <laughs> The, I was so hoping it was a guy who yeah. found the Rough Riders, yeah, but right. no, daughter. Yes. Poor Liz. Poor Liz. Mom, mom, uh, why do you seem on edge lately? Have you had too much coffee or is a light tremble? Mom, you're staying down in the kitchen smoking <laughs> your cigarettes with your wine really late at night these days. What's going on? Mom, get out of the shower. It's been 45 minutes. What do you, I hope, what, I hope you're washing ketchup off yourself. You're sitting in the shower with ketchup <laughs> spiraling down the drain, mom. Um, Rough rider. Hey, mom, why does dad have his Teddy Roosevelt hat on? I, I took your load out of the dryer. I, I, I hope you're eating a lot of beets. Are you... Oh, no. Oh, God. God. Maybe this should be a 20-minute podcast today. Uh, all right. Listen. Uh, so that gets us into it. Listen, so you started again. last week. I believe on last week's show, you were already S predicting all of this GameStop stuff. Well, well, no. So I have a friend, we'll call it on the inside, and he is the biggest conspiracy theorist I know, Craig, and he's great. And he's currently uh, holed up in Ohio during this uh, pandemic with Kilborn his is in Ohio? No, not Kilborn. So this guy's in there, and he's on these Reddit pages, and that's where this started. And basically, the long story is GameStop, which is a like the blockbuster of uh, of video games, right? You know that you you can hold and all that. So they just like blockbuster. No one's getting these movies via things you can hold anymore. Actual tapes and the brick and mortar of it all is is on the way out. So, but there's a nostalgic play. And also there was a belief, actually, that they could turn it around and a new guy came in. All right. To move this along, it started because a couple of these Reddit guys genuinely liked GameStop. But then what it really became was GameStop was one of the most heavily shorted stocks. So if you really back up for the real far away look at this thing, for people who don't understand what's going on is... You can short stocks, which mean you're betting they go down. These Wall Street bigwigs and hedge funds have shorted a bunch of companies that they think will go down. Now, not only are they betting they will go down, but their bets on it going down push it down. And there's a thing called naked shorts, which is kind of not allowed, but they don't enforce it. So it's done like crazy. And do you know what a naked short is, Greg? Is that when I sit down in a bathing suit that's too short? It's not that bad, but it's okay. still really bad. And it's basically, uh, all right, we want to short this company. It's the Greg and Mike company, and we're going to short the shit out of it. It's like uh, get, to short to short something, you, you borrow shares, like from, you know, like Merrill Lynch. You borrow shares from someone that owns them, and you sell them. And the idea is you're going to buy them back in a few weeks or months and you are really hoping it goes down because you're going to buy it at that lower. So you borrow them at 20 and then you then sell them at 10. No, you, yeah, you buy, you borrow them at 20. Sorry, you sell them at 20 and then you're hoping to buy them back at 10. Sounds complicated because it is. But generally now it's like, uh, hey, fucking, I think uh, Greg, my company is going to go down. Give me shares. And they're like, we don't have any. They're, they're all like, they're all accounted for. All right, fuck it. We're going to make up. 40 more say there's 100 shares of greg and mike company we're gonna make up that there's 40 more and uh we're gonna sell them now and hope to buy them back later and then everyone who holds it's like well what the fuck you just made up shares that you're gonna short now and it's hurting the value of the stock also it's completely fucking made up so gamestop was 140 percent shorted 40 percent doesn't even exist right in that in that so equation. it's like it's so it's like uh the producers the, the the movie the producers basically yeah it's fraud i guess everything falls under that ba banner in a way so uh 
Now it gets fun, actually, instead of technical. So Reddit people are like, hey, you know what we could do? And these are individuals, like my friend Craig. You know, we could fuck these millionaires, and they would, if this stock went up, actually, this shitty stock, it would so fuck them. Because what happens is if the price goes up, their billion dollar, and I'm not you throwing that word around loosely, their billion dollar bets on the stock going down get fucked. And then because they're they, forced to buy them at a certain date. Usually it's a 30 day short. So when so 30 when days comes up, whatever the price is at, they have to now buy those shorts. And they're they, and they bought yes. them on margin, which means for every hundred dollars they spent buying it. They actually bought a thousand dollars worth, and they owe right. on that thousand, not that hundred. Yes, they mm. borrowed at twenty in my example, and they are dying to buy it back at ten. Well, they borrowed at twenty, and now what do they have to buy it back at? Two hundred and sixty, because that's what these this Reddit army Reddit army just goes, hey everybody, buy it, buy yeah. it, buy it. Buy it, hold it. There's one kid. Remember that thing I said? He's sitting there in his baseball cap. He made two billion dollars because he did two. But the guy in the baseball cap made two billion with a B, because they did options on the way up also. And that I sent you another link like yesterday, and it was like, uh, don't care. The guy just wrote, don't. He sent a little clip of how much money he made, and he had made twenty six million. And he goes, don't care. I'm holding. Like they. Wait. This is. Wait. Tell people what he spent. To make that money, what his investment was. Was it 50000 or some? It was, I forget what it was. I think it was even less than that. Yeah. It might have been. But no, some of them like put a big chunk of change and then it's become so principled. So get this. I started telling you guys about it, I think Tuesday. And then I think it was Thursday. So all of them are on Robinhood because Robinhood came about saying, we are not the man. Free trades no commissions, and and it's Robin. It take you know the whole idea is the little guy can maybe win in this, right? And maybe taking from from the rich. Well, all of a sudden, Robinhood, Schwab, Ameritrade muted the buy button on GameStop and AMC and Best Buy and BlackBerry and all these other ones that um, were heavily shorted that the Reddit army had targeted and said, here's our list if we want to fuck Wall Street. Start buying these, even though it is not based on value at all. Right. And and they muted the buy button on GameStop and AMC and allowed you to sell it. And the whole thing, the whole Reddit army is furious and guessing that the huge, huge money, established money, the man called Robin Hood and said, you are fucking muting that buy button because we channel so much of our business to you and just mute it. And how about this? Just mute it a fucking day. There's going to be huge back and then apologize and unmute it the next day. But that day will tank the stock because all the only thing people can do is sell it and more people can't buy it. And that's exactly what it did. It tanked it for one day. But the greatest thing was it was like poking the bear that everyone then was like, fuck that. Everybody get on this and buy. And the next day it shot up again. So the people that now what prevents this from happening all the time and even in, an, in the opposite direction, what prevents a group of stockbrokers from saying, pick a stock, the gap. Let's right. skyrocket the gap and all make money off of it. Let's all buy the gap. Let's get 100 billionaires to each buy a million dollars worth of gap tomorrow and then sell it once it peaks. What, what keeps that from happening? Okay, it happens all the time. I mean, the most famous example is pump and dump, where someone will be like, hey, guys, like to his friends, hey, guys, I need this stock to go up. And then I'll get out. Gentlemen's agreement here. We'll all get out. Like let's, but let's spread the word. Tell all your traders to push it. Tell all your traders to do this. Like I remember when a guy really pushed when the stratosphere in Las Vegas opened, and my friend from high school sadly was a cold caller for like Merrill Lynch or or Lehman Brothers. And by the way, naked trades they think are one of the big things that brought down Lehman Brothers and destroyed it and made it go out of business in 2009. So. He would call me, like, by the stratosphere. I'm like, Kenny, I go, uh, uh, I don't know, man. I don't like it. And I think that, and sure enough, I watched it go up for a few days, 
and then the big guys got out. But they needed it to go above its IPO price because they were on the hook at that. I anyway. So, so in other words, when the when the fat cats on Wall Street manipulate stock prices for a profit. It goes unchecked. But as soon yes. as the little guy, the individual stock buyer does it, they close them out and say, you can't. But huge difference also is the little guy was 100 percent transparent. You didn't know that there was an invisible hand fucking you right. by, by, by all of a sudden you've been told by and you see it going up. That's the key to a pump and dump is you actually see the thing take off and you're like, fucking I'm in and it feeds on itself. And then the big guys just wait till it hits that certain number and they all get out and you are left holding your dick in your hands. And it's like decimated stock price. This was Hey, everybody, we're going to do this on public forums and let's do this, guys. Let's all get in by and buy it. And actually, we're not going to pump and dump. We're going to buy it and hold it and keep telling people to buy it. Now, there is a concern. This can't end well. Of course. Because it's a this, pyramid scheme. This, well, I think, you know, well, I think America's a pyramid. As soon as people stop putting money into the system, America doesn't work anymore. Yeah. I mean, Social Security is nothing but that. So anyway... And I know I could get current corrections on, you know, whatever, uh, on, on that theory. But um, it is way more transparent. And this isn't to ex exploit anybody where true pump and dumps are designed to exploit people. And so there are huge differences here. And uh, anyway, it was fascinating because all of a sudden, as you just summarized, it was a Whoa, 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 no fucking regulations for us. None, none, none. And then this happened. Are you going to regulate this shit? Or yeah, right, what? And they right. are, it's it's just like a lot of people in a recent election who were calling the other side crybabies, crybabies, crybabies until they felt slighted and then their entitlement kicks in and they're the crybabies. All right, so and that's what, this goes to the letter. The big question everybody's thinking right now, did Mike Gibbons get in on any of these stocks? I did. I got in on Tuesday or whatever, and I got in late. I got in way late. And, and so even now, of course, I'm down. <laughs> um, but, oh, my God. It two never days fails. Ago, you can't no. fucking make money on the stock market. I'm, I'm down in Bitcoin almost 30%. Wow. Although I didn't factor in Friday. It went up a lot, I guess. I don't know. I'm not, I'm not really following it. I'm just... That in a weird way, I'm just buying that and holding it. But I was going to sell. So I think I bought GameStop. Keep in mind, I think GameStop was at like $10 or something like that. I bought it at $360. Good for you. A share. Yeah. yeah. But you did the right thing, Mike. You did right the right now thing. Right now it's at, I don't know, somewhere between 280 and maybe it's, maybe it's a no, maybe it's in the threes now. Yeah. Uh, but listen, I want to say to my credit, I think you can more convincingly say to my discredit i had my hand on the sell button gamestop went to 500 and i owned it at 360 yeah and i didn't and i i fucking i started to believe in this cause of course i did i'm mr shorter who's trying to say this is so broken this is so fucking broken yeah that how is it not going to break yeah how is something that's broken not breaking and um all right, so advice, so advice to people this week on these stocks. Uh, I, I, I can't. I guess if you already know the disclaimer, AMC is the much more fun one to play around with because it's at like $12 or $13 a share. So it went from 2 I bought it at 15 I had my finger on the sell button at 20 something and, Well, this is the funny. So this thing, my buddy who's really deep goes, and this is when I told you guys about it, it was – like, say, 2 p.m. here. The market already closed. GameStop had went from, like, $2 over the last two days or something to, like, 10 I mean, a giant uptick, right? Same thing as GME. Those two are named together. So I'm like, listen, you know how these things go. After hours trading, which we don't have access to, the insiders do, you know, might drive this up. And it, it, it closes at, uh, no, sorry, no, sorry. It closed at four ninety eight. I'm not saying ten is ridiculous. All right, all right wrap it, it up, Mike. We got to move on to other fucking news here. All right, it closed at four ninety eight. It opened the next morning 
at $20. So then I watched it go down. I bought it at 15 I think it's at 13 now. If you wanted to gamble and feel part of this thing, I guess I'd buy some AMC. I don't know what it will open I think the other thing you do at. is just get on Reddit and wait for the next one they announce because they're going to continue doing this. No, no, they're all, it's very hard to do that. You really have to be ahead of it. But no, there's a lot of things in this Wall Street group, which are actually tons of really smart people who figured this out also. So anyway, AMC would be fun. The great news I just read was China, apparently all these individuals has latched on and they want to support this cause. So a huge influx of money might no. be coming to buy these stocks. Yes. Now here's the other thing. And there's the last thing I'll say. When the big cats convinced Ameritrade, Schwab, and Robinhood to mute the buy button and knew it was going to crash the stock, a manipulated crash of the stock under the guise of regulation and concern, they all shorted again. Yeah. So there's there's new in, there's new incentive to drive up the price and fuck them again. Yeah. All right. All right. Um, speaking of uh, <laughs> little lesbians, an eight-year-old student was kicked out of a... Cr oh, we forgot a little newspaper crinkle. Oh, I got one. All right. I thought my crinkles were great last week, by the way. Uh, we got Holy feedback shit, on that. Holy shit, 15 minutes. People loved it. Yeah. Uh, an eight-year-old student was kicked out of a Christian elementary school after she told another female student she had a crush on her. Mm. Chloe Shelton, a second grader at Rejoice Christian School in Owasa, Oklahoma. Chloe was immediately removed from the playground and spent the next few hours in the principal's office. Oh, my God. Where she was told that the Bible says that women can only have children with a man. The principal asked me how I feel about, this is the mother, how I feel about girls liking girls. I told her I see no issue with it. Administrators, administrator, administrators told her not to come back Friday. The next day, they expelled her five-year-old son. They also kicked the girl off the softball team and took her Birkenstocks away. So they really <laughs> went after her. <laughs> Listen, in fairness, the sun was blowing two guys in the uh, by the jungle gym. That's too much. I just said that about a five-year-old boy. And actually, the guy uh, he was blowing, his nickname was Jungle Jim. I mean, listen, I was kicked out of Catholic school in seventh grade. Is it such, I know this is Christian, uh, is this such a bad thing to be kicked out of an organization who preys upon the number one target generally is, I mean, the perpetrator there is home, as Norm MacDonald famously has said, homosexual pedophiles. So maybe this girl being kicked out of there uh, is going to be a win in the long run. But on a serious note, how, listen, I guess it's the parents' fault. This is a private school. They don't have to go there. And I, I read a quick thing I looked online because I wanted to see if it was Catholic. It's not. I wanted to see uh, what their deal is. Yeah, it's it's prayer, mandatory prayer every single day. So, you know, this is what you signed up for. They they just did the arguably permanent damage. Or well, at least it depends damage. on they, how much you tell the daughter why she was kicked out of school. Well, what do you think they told her when they're explaining to her yeah, and correcting yeah. her behavior right, right. that, uh, no, no, what you just did only can be, uh, you know, directed at a man? Dude, they just stamped her ticket to Lilith Fair with that. And if she wasn't gay, she is now. Hopefully. Oh, yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, all right, let's that. get to international news. The Polish yeah. government, well, a little crinkle. Oh, yeah, of course. This is international section right here. The Polish government has imposed a near total ban on abortions, including the termination of pregnancies with fetal defects. The unexpected announcement sparked nationwide protests. The ruling <laughs> states that abortions may only be permitted in cases of rape, incest, or when the mother's life is in danger. But it's but they're Polish women. So they were showing up to the clinic claiming they were burning incense at the time of conception. They said, no, dummy incest <laughs> other woman said they had run dmc playing at the time of conception no idiot not rap rape <laughs> <laughs> no wait a minute this story 
and how could it possibly sound familiar? Did we, we didn't do this. Maybe we talked about it one week before the podcast. <laughs> it would be very Polish of us if this is the second time we're doing it. But my, my inkling inside me now, and I had no time to prepare for this podcast, but my inkling is to go right to, they also had a huge problem with all the women coming for abortions in Poland who are not pregnant. And, uh, <laughs> But just want to be premedit- premeditative. Uh, and that joke sounds yeah. familiar to me. Right. I don't know. Yeah. We may have done this before. You know what? <laughs> That's the beauty of getting older. I watch I watch Goodfellas this week. Have seen it 15 times. Still still impressed by different <laughs> different parts that I don't remember seeing. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. We should, and we haven't even run a repeat yet of the podcast. All right. What's going so, on in uh, China, Mike? Oh, yeah. So here, inter- more international news. China rolls out new anal swab tests to curb the COVID outbreak in Beijing. Now, I don't have any more info on that. I just wanted to read that headline. (laughs) Well, it's the good news is no COVID, sir. The even better news is your ass is tighter than the security at a Uyghur concentration camp. Very impressed. I like that you are keeping this Uyghur story alive because it really is a humanitarian thing. Um, What, the million people in a concentration camp that the U.N. can't come up with a resolution for because China is so fucking powerful? It's crazy. Hopefully they're shorting the market. Uh, So the sub headline, which I did peek at, was, quote, the rabid invasive test inserts a swab two to three centimeter, centimeters into the rectum and rotates it several times. Oh, I just got a shiver. Sign me up. <laughs> <laughs> I think I have it again. I'm pretty sure I have it again. <laughs> was I exposed? Yes. Yeah. I was definitely exposed the last time you rotated that thing inside my ass. Soon Chow, like how come you've been again? in the shower for 25 minutes? I'm cleaning my bunghole. Why? Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. I got an appointment later. Why do you keep not wearing a mask? I, can you ask me that after the <laughs> test, please? I guess this is bad news for people that were stuffing those pangolins up their ass. <laughs> They're going right. to find them. They're Florida, gonna, man. Right, are we moving? Let's get to Florida, man. All right. Florida, you got this one. Go for it. A Florida man is out on bond for sex child abuse. He uh, charges he cut off his ankle bracelet, attempted to raise money to flee the country. Keith Morris Smith, 29, created the online fundraiser titled Trying to Be Free and set up a donation goal of $2,000. Quote, I'm fundraising to basically live. I was on bond that was revoked over something I never did, stated the Mo- the GoFundMe page, uh, which has since been taken down. Quote, I'm on the run. There's no going back now. I've already cut off my monitor, got rid of most of my things except for the clothes. If I go back to jail, I'll die. I need help with the money to get out of the country. So Wow. So donating money will get him out of this country as opposed to living in one of these fucking Winnebago's in Venice Beach? I'll donate. (laughs) So wait a minute. Is there a GoFundMe to help all Floridians leave the country? (laughs) Sign? I'm signing up for two things. I want that very, very thorough Chinese uh, swab done, and I would also like to help support all Floridians trying to leave the country. All right, give me a crinkle. Let's go to entertainment. You got it. I watched right. I watched a series called The Assassination of Gianni Versace, which yeah, is yeah, yeah. so fucking good. Did you see it? Very gay. Very gay. No, but it's, you know, what's his name? That that Irish uh, gay guy here in Hollywood, uh, who does very, very good stuff. He did the OJ, you know, dramatization. John, I forget his name. I think anyway, it, won a, it won a ton of Emmys. Ryan? 
Ryan uh, something. Anyway, it'd be great if we had a producer him. who could like get off of his fucking. Uh, uh, his chat rooms do not celebrate uh, gay TV shows. No, so, no. Now, wait, you added Hamilton? Wow, you had a real week here. I what, watched what a it? lot of shit. I watched Hamilton on, um, uh, I you guess had never on seen it? Disney Plus. Had never seen the play. I got tickets. When I was writing on Crashing, my family came to New York to visit me. So I went through my agents and I got like front row tickets to Hamilton for them to see it. But I was working so much, I was afraid I wouldn't get the night off. So I only bought three tickets and they went and it was and it was like one of those things where you go like and then the night of the play, we had like a half a day anyway. And I had the fucking night off and it was too late to get tickets. And they went and they wouldn't shut up about how fucking great it was. I saw that. I saw it. And I'm not a big rap guy. It's so fucking good. It's unbelievable. And Lynn yeah. manuel what's his name? Miranda, Lynn? yeah. He's not a good singer. He has a bad voice. He's a bad dancer. But it he's doesn't matter. He's the first one to tell you. Yeah, the guy that replaced him is, he's the first one to tell you. The guy that replaced me is so much stronger. Well, that's who Aaron saw. And she said that he was, she, after seeing it on Apple, she's like, oh, no, no. The, the guy who replaced him is fucking amazing. The, yeah, I saw it here at the Pantages and was and was pretty blown away. It very much is a, like, history book uh, meets uh, Eminem. There, it's so very Eminem. Very Eminem. Very Eminem. And, it's, and have you seen, people have broken down all the hip hop references. There's tons of them, like conscious, very cool, like oh, yeah. uh, references. Yeah, he's got to Biggie, everybody. To Biggie, he's got Sugar Hill Gang is in there. Yep. Uh, but but the book is written by Ron Cherno, and I know I'm I'm a big historical biography fan, and it's one of the best biographies I've ever read. I'd read it like seven or eight years ago, and uh, they nailed it. They just got they got everything right. It was so fucking good. Wow. Um, and all then, right, dude. I sadly have four minutes, even right, four less. Four minutes, so let's get to the cartoons, the comics. Pan's Labyrinth, though, it's, it says you saw that, and Tiger Woods. All right, we'll talk about that. Pan's Labyrinth is fucking mi- is mind-blowingly, it's so good. And that's all, folks. All right, 30-second shout-out to Cloris Leachman, who is one of the greatest yes. comedic actresses ever. I mean, Mel Brooks, I'll just read oh Mel Brooks' tweet, and we'll, go from, we'll yeah. leave it at that. Such sad news, Cloris was insanely talented. She could make you laugh or cry at the drop of a hat. Always such a pleasure to have on set. Every time I hear a horse whinny, I will never forget the th- I will never I will forever think of Cloris's unforgettable flow bloucher, bloucher. She is irreplaceable and will be greatly missed. That's from yep. a reference to uh, high anxiety. Yeah. Uh, uh, or, or was it Young Frankenstein? No, no, Young Frankenstein. Yeah, yeah, Young Frankenstein. Uh, and you know about Fran Blatcher every time she said his friend, every time they said her name, you, the horse whinnied. Do you know about yeah, that? Yeah, that's right. That's right. Be- because Blaucher means glue in German. <laughs> if that's the ex- actual word, whatever the word is. Also, so shout that was out a little to, joke he put in. Shout out to Cicely Tyson, who also died. Uh, fucking seven decade career, Tony Awards, Emmy Awards. Yep. She almost got the EGOT. She had the Emmy, the, the Grammy. No, she had the Emmy, the Tony. And the uh, Oscar. Well, Oscar nom, I think, yeah. No, no, no. Well, she got a lifetime uh, Oh, Oscar. all right, then. I don't know if that counts uh, with the EGOT. Backing up to sports, just because next week we'll oh, be right. on Super Bowl Sunday. Fucking Buccaneers, man. Unbelievable, even though... They really should have lost that game. But next week, what is it? They're they're getting three and a half points? It went down to three. First Super Bowl at home for one of the teams. Uh, yes. Ever. Yes. And people keep writing in about, no, the, uh, you know, the Rams played. Yeah, the Rams played at the Rose Bowl. That wasn't their home stadium. And the 49ers played at a field, but it was not their home field. But it was in... It was in the area of San Francisco. Anyway, you're down two hundred dollars. So the of final, I am. final. Uh, super- don't worry, AMC, GameStop, the cause. So you get three points coming up. We'll see how it goes. All right, let's get to the funnies. Let's start with. Uh, why don't we just do our two favorites? You do Family yeah. Circus. I'll do Blondie. 
Uh, holy. All right. Did I, did some, oh, someone grabbed Family Circus for me. Yes. All right. This is a blind read. Speaking of, uh, here we go. Do you need 10 minutes to process it? No, I don't think I do. So there's an old woman I've never seen. Uh, I'm assuming it's the grandma. I'm not even reading the print down below, but now I'm sneaking a glance at the word grandma. She has a pot. She's coming over to serve them. She's holding a spoon, clearly. And the kid's there, the boy. Billy. His has, name, Jesus Christ, Mike. His name is Billy. So the fucking kid's there with his bowl, and she's clearly serving him. And then it's the kid talking out of his pie hole, and he goes, Grandma, this chili you made... Oh, we fucking God. Finish it. You ha- Mike, the rule is you have to finish it. You can't not read the whole punchline. I have a memorial service. That I can't. <laughs> I, I have to watch where I put my energy. Okay. There's something Greg and I should tell you guys, which is, and sometimes you're taught that or you just learn it on your own. When you're doing, when you're writing a joke, but this could apply to anybody's life. If you're an architect, I'm sure it's the same thing and, and whatever you're doing that's creative. You eventually, it's unconscious to ignore the very, very first instinct that you might have on something. Like making because, pancakes. You, you, you throw out the first batch. And it's going to be such, such low-hanging fruit. You, you, you're obviously, the easiest thing has come to you first. Yeah. So you don't do that. Okay. This you gotta read would it. not, uh, hold on. This would not have even been on the list yeah. of first. You, it would have subconsciously been rejected. Uh-huh. Grandma, this chili you made isn't chili at all. Yeah. Yeah. I mean- it boggles the mind. There's like, yeah, print it. Yep, I'm sending it in. Yeah. I'm sending that in. Right, right. And again, it's, this is, as we pointed out last week, oh, and a lot of people pointed out last week that um, the comment I read about Family Circus was actually a line from a movie. I can't remember the movie, but it's T- Timothy Oliphant's. Was uh, it was his line about you read the funnies, you're in a great mood, you've read the <laughs> Sunday papers, and then the la- it's always the last one on the bottom right corner, and that's the fucking thing that sticks with you all week is Family Circus. Oh, you know that might have come from. There is a movie that shits on it, uh, with Tom Cruise's eventual wife is in it. Of course, this is here I go. No names. Can't get the movie. Can't get no, the no, actor. No, no, no. That's get the exactly actress. the movie. That's the movie. Kate, Katie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kate, what's her name? John August, I think, wrote it, actually. That, that I know that is crazy, but I think uh, here comes Chris is going to fire it up. But anyway, Kate. yes. What was Kate? Come on. Tom Cruise's wife, Kate. Katie. Yeah. I have a memorial today. I, I have right. no bandwidth all for right, any of this. All right, let's get to Blondie. Let's get Fucking to Blondie. This will cheer you all up. Katie Holmes. Katie Holmes. There we go. All right. All this right. is Blondie. Uh, so, of course, uh, Dagwood walks into the kitchen where Blondie is doing what? Fucking dishes. While this asshole's got both hands in his pockets, walking around in an <laughs> ugly orange fucking polo shirt. Just by the way, I gotta take a second to say, Blondie's pants, they are, it's like an aqua blue with a <laughs> Kelly ridiculous. green top. It doesn't even match, but she makes it work. And the buttocks, she's presenting. She's literally <laughs> bent over in front of Dagwood, bent over putting something in the dishwasher, and he goes, I can't decide whether to take a brisk walk or hit the sofa. She says, the walk sounds like a better idea, dear. And he goes, you're probably right. Third frame, this fucking eunuch laying on the couch taking a nap. How about a third choice? You could take the walk, go to the sofa, or you can ravage this fucking 10 that you're married to that you don't deserve. You could grab that ass. The kids have left the house. Take her right over the silverware drawer and just fucking do it for me, Dagwood, once. Also, uh, what's up with the guy who draws this? He's like, this is just incidental. Like, it has nothing to do with it. It's just to drive Greg Fitzsimmons crazy. <laughs> like, yeah, right. Th- those, I mean, those are conspicuously tight pants yes. with heels. Yep. And in the second frame, her bosom. Do you see the fucking semicircle under her right tit? The sh- it's a shelf. Jesus Christ. 
I gotta thank right. him. I gotta thank him, <laughs> even though he kills me with Dagwood. It, it, it's worth it anyway. Uh, Mike, listen. Good luck uh, today. Yeah, sorry. Uh, I'm sure a lot of people listening are sending their best thoughts to your family, your oh, dad you. especially, and uh, and I'll be on the call. I'll be watching in uh, oh nice. One Just hour. have it on. The, uh, yeah, I know. I'm getting lots of texts. Yeah. Alrighty, man. Well, listen. Uh, sorry for the everybody for the abbreviated podcast. I know I uh, often say to move it along, and we get all this mail saying stop saying that. So. Uh, sorry if you're on your walk or whatever it is you do when you listen to this. Um, but, uh, yeah, maybe we'll do a long one next week. We'll do a longer one next week. Okay. See you then. Uh, I gotta get my China swab. All right. Bye-bye. Take it, Ish. Take it, Ish, everybody. (laughs) 